Today I'm going to show you how to use the liquify to help your subjects look their best in Photoshop. Hello and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're showing you how to use the liquify tool, which basically is a tool that allows you to push and pull pixels around on your images. And there are so many wonderful uses of this tool. Now, my personal favorite is for things like hair and clothing. Sometimes you just have some wrinkles, you wanna smooth those out. Honestly, it can make a huge difference. We're also gonna show you how to use the new Face Aware Liquify, which will allow you to change facial expressions of your subjects. I would say use this with extreme caution, not something that I do personally, but I did wanna show you how to use it. And then finally, a note on usage here, this tool has has been used to change body shape in the past. These days, it's not really used to do that so much. Obviously, that's gonna be between you and your subject and your client. That's a discussion you can have, but I would recommend keeping that to the minimum and love people for who they are. Let's go ahead and jump in and show you how to use the liquify tool. So we're starting off with this image and you can see our subject just has a lot of like kind of wrinkles and things like that in his clothing. And this is extremely common. We see this all the time and the liquify tool is perfect for this. So what we're going to do, let's go to our background layer and convert this to a smart object. So we're going to go to filter and we're going to go to convert to smart filters. There we go. Now you can see we have a smart object icon. That way I can change this liquify at any time. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we're going to go to filter and then down here to where it says liquify. Fantastic. And we have a whole new liquify dialogue. Let's go ahead and hit controller command plus a couple times to zoom in. Now we have a lot of different tools here on the left. We're gonna go over a few of these, but most of these honestly aren't really used that much. This top tool is called the forward warp tool, and that's the tool we use most often. So we're gonna show you mostly how to use that tool. So let's go to our forward warp tool. Now with this tool, you're gonna to wanna make sure you open up your brush tool options where you can change the size of your brush, the pressure, which is going to be how much it's going to push and pull these pixels around, the density, which will be all the way towards the edge of the brush or just toward the center, and the rate as well, which determines how much it's actually going to, again, push and pull those pixels. So we're just going to keep our pressure right about the center, and then the density, I like to keep that a little bit lower. Now, basically, you have a cursor. So if I click and pull and drag in any one of these areas, you can see literally I'm just pulling in pixels over and over and over again. I can make whatever shape I want. And as you can imagine, you can do some damage here. So let's go to our next tool right down on the list. This is our brush reconstruct tool, super powerful. Let's go ahead and click there. And then all you have to do is, you can use your open and close brackets to change your brush size. All you have to do is simply paint over that area and it's like a undo that you can paint. So if you think you did something a little bit too strong, then you're gonna be using your brush reconstruct. So let's go ahead and go back to our forward warp tool. Now, what we wanna do, let's go ahead and zoom in. I wanna kind of smooth this out a little bit. It's just a little distracting. So the big key here, the big key is you wanna make sure that your brush size is about the size of the area you wanna move. So if I wanna go ahead and take care of some of these smaller little hills and valleys, I'm gonna use the open and close brackets on my keyboard to make my brush a little bit smaller, okay? And then we're just gonna kind of push these down, make this a little bit smaller, and then push that up and push that down. So you can see we're making the brush about the size of the object we actually want to go ahead and move around. And this is gonna give us a lot more control on a fine level. And then if you wanna do something a little bit of a larger control, you can do that simply by making your brush a little bit bigger. So it really is one of those tools where changing your brush size frequently and often makes a lot of sense. So we're starting off by simply kind of like smoothing out all of these wrinkles here in our subject's clothing. There we go. And then once these are a little bit more smooth from like this level here, perfect, that's looking a little good. We're gonna make our brush a little bit larger and then we're gonna just go ahead and smooth out the overall shape of our subject's clothing. There we go. And just kind of bring that right back together. And as you can see, that's already starting to look much, much better. And of course I could make that perfectly smooth if I wanted to, literally just making my brush really nice and small and going in and doing all this little detail work. Really nice and easy. Just make sure you make your brush larger and smaller and you can really do a good job with that. Let's go ahead and zoom out and show you uh, this other area on our subject. I'm gonna hold the space bar and move over here. 
This looks like just a natural feature of our subject sweater, but again, I can just make my brush a little bit larger and we can kind of minimize that just a little bit. There we go. Now you're noticing this is just gonna, it's not specifically targeting our subject shirt. This is actually moving the pixels of the background a little bit too. So if you find yourself in a situation where you have a complicated background that you might need to kind of rebuild, you can use content aware fill or of course, you can use generative fill with AI to do that as well. Now here, let's go ahead. Maybe this shirt just sags down a little bit. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit more form fitting. And we're going to do this. Now, again, I'm just going to personally say this. You can use these tools however you want. My job is to teach you how to use all these wonderful tools in Photoshop. I think that, you know, working with clothing is a great way to use the liquify tool because, you know, clothing fits in different places. And this is not changing. My goal is not to change your subject's body simply the fit of the clothing. That's what we're kind of working on. And we can see it's going to make a big impact on this image. Okay, there we go. Let's kind of just bring this out and just, you know, get clean up some of these lines. That's basically our goal here. And, you know, you can still have some fabric that's kind of coming in and out. It's going to make it a little bit more believable, but we're just kind of cleaning up these lines. And again, all this is with my forward warp tool. Now I have this pocket that's sticking out a little bit here. So for that, for instance, let's go ahead and zoom in, Control or Command Plus. I wouldn't want to just take this pocket and then push it up like that because look at what's happening to this background, right? So what we would want to do is make our brush a little bit smaller and then push kind of straight in the direction of the background so we maintain that line in the background as well. That's one of the big giveaways that you've used the liquify tool is that you're going to start to warp around and make your background have a warp as well and that's something we want to avoid all right we're almost done let's go ahead and zoom out here and you can see i'm going to take care of this arm as well and then in just a second here we're going to show you my favorite tool of all these liquify tool options there we go so there are a lot of tools located within the liquify tool but again in my personal opinion, the forward warp tool is the most powerful and it's the tool that I find myself going to 90% of the time. And if you really learn to master this, the only real thing you need to do is just remember, always make your brush larger and smaller. If you're working with a smaller area, make your brush smaller. If you wanna work in a large area, make your brush larger. And if you stick to that, you're gonna be a liquify tool pro. All right, now we don't have to make it perfectly smooth, but that's already looking great. So you can see our subject's clothing looks really nice, a lot cleaner. So now let's move into my favorite tool within the liquify tool. So we've already showed you how you can use the brush reconstruct tool to simply paint away different areas if you'd like. But there's one more tool that I love, and it's actually right over here on the right hand side where we see brush reconstruct options. And here we have this reconstruct. So let's go ahead and click on reconstruct right there. Fantastic. And we have this revert reconstruction. Now this is incredibly cool because we have a slider here. Now see, as I click and drag this slider, it's literally showing me what it looked like before and after. And I can choose how I would like this to be applied to my image. So this is at 0%, this is all the way before. I can go ahead and apply that if I wanted to, or I can say, you know what, this looks good, or I can back it off a little bit and say, give me a little bit of that original shape. So if you find you do too much, you can just kind of fine tune that here, and that's gonna be across your entire image. I love this tool. Let's go ahead and hit okay, and then we're gonna hit okay right here as well. Now again, keep in mind, the nice thing, because what we did is made this a smart object first. So because it's a smart object, now I have this smart filter and I can literally just turn this liquify off and on by clicking here. I can turn that off and on at any time, or I can even double click right here to go back into my liquify tool and say, you know what? I thought I did all of it pretty good, but here on the arm, let's just go back to our reconstruct tool and I'm gonna be able to reconstruct that just like it was before, okay? I'm gonna hit undo because I actually think it looked better in the after, but making that a smart object means you can get back to this at any time. So when working with clothing or hair and things like that, I think this is the perfect tool. All right, let's go ahead and hit okay. There we go. And here we can see in a real quick uh, minute, there's the before and the after. Notice I'm not changing the subject's face. I'm not changing how they are, like their, their body or appearance and things like that. I'm literally just changing how the clothing wears on my subject. All right. 
Now we have one more great example for you. And this time we're gonna show you Face Aware Liquify, which is a relatively new feature. I recommend using extreme caution when using this, but I do wanna show you how to use it. So we're gonna go into our second example. By the way, you can download these sample images so you can follow right along. Okay, first step is go to your background layer, always convert it to a smart object. So we're gonna to go to filter, convert for smart filters. There we go, now we can see we have a smart object. Fantastic. What we're gonna do is go to filter and then down here to liquefy once more. And then there's a couple areas with her clothing that I might wanna fix. Let's go ahead right down here. This area where it just kind of sticks out a little bit. Again, we're gonna be using our forward warp tool and simply use the size of our brush, open and close brackets to kind of just push this in just a little bit. We know that's not the shape of our subject's body. It's literally just some clothing that's kind of bunching up in that way. So we can just kind of push that in and pull this out a little bit and just create a general overall smoother shape that's just gonna, you know, kind of clean up these details. And it's not details that you might not normally think of, but honestly, they make a big difference. So I can click here on reconstruct and we can see there's the before and the after. Just, you know, it's clothing, it bunches up, it moves and things like that. Let's hit cancel. Now, another thing that I don't mind doing personally is hair. Let's say I wanna make my brush a little bit larger and we wanna just pull this out just a little bit to give our subjects hair a little bit more volume. I think this can be a really nice use of the liquify tool as well. We're just gonna kinda of pull that out and give it volume. Again, I'm not changing my actual subject, just giving her hair a little bit more volume. And for me, that's totally okay. Now, I do wanna show you Face Aware Liquify. It's a powerful tool. Do I use it personally? Uh, ethically, I feel like mm, not the best tool to use, but I wanna show you how to use it just so you know that it does exist and you have that as an option uh, if you wanna edit it. Just like for this sort of stuff, just be, if you're editing pictures of yourself, do whatever you wanna do. But if you're editing pictures of other people, make sure you talk with them and make sure that communication's really clear because we don't wanna overstep the boundary and then start to make people not look like themselves or, you know, that there's just a big ethical gray area there. So I just wanna kinda, you know, mention that. And now we're gonna show you how to use the tool. So here we have Face Aware Liquify. Let's go ahead and open that up and you can see we can actually select different faces. And we have our eye size, eye height, eye width, eye tilt, eye distance. Let's go ahead and lock all these together and it's gonna do both of the eyes at the same time. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom into our subject. Now here, literally, and this kind of takes a, <laughs> there's a app called Facetune. This is kind of like what that's from basically. So you can adjust your eye size with this and it's literally just a slider. Your eye height, you can do things like this. Your eye width, you can bring that in and out. Your eye tilt, you can tilt the eyes back and forth, and then you can even change the eye distance as well. Now you can undo any of this stuff if you need to. All you have to do is just go right here to any of these numbers and then simply type in zero. There we go, and it's going to reset. But if you did wanna do some of these things, that's how you do it. Now you also have options for your nose. So you could adjust your nose height, you could adjust your nose width, okay? You have your mouth. Now this is one that I don't personally have like a huge issue with is um, for the mouth. Let's just put that back to zero. For the mouth, you can adjust a little bit of a smile. So if you want your subject to have a little bit more of a smile, I find that generally looks pretty natural. You don't wanna go too crazy, it starts to look weird. But if you just do a little bit of smile, that can look good. You can make your upper lip larger or smaller. You can make your lower lip larger or smaller. As you can see, you can do quite a bit with this tool. I like to keep things, again, really nice and natural, but you do have all these options. You can adjust the size and scale of your forehead and your chin height and your jawline and your face width. You could do a lot of stuff, it's really powerful. But again, I'm gonna just set all this back to zero because that is where I stand personally. But my job is to show you how to use all these tools and give you a little bit of uh, you know, my general stance on how they should be used, but I can control how you use these tools. So that's that's where that's at as well. But this will basically all give you the options to face aware liquefy anyone's face. And of course, if you want to, all you have to do is hit okay, right down at the bottom. The manual things that I did, here we can just turn off this liquefy on and off. I just did a little bit here with her uh, clothing, and then I made her hair just like a little bit, I kind of fixed the shape of her hair. Now let's say, we did do uh, something and we needed to do a little bit of like cleanup in the background. So I'll give you one 
more example of how you can use like uh, content aware fill or you can use generative fill using AI. So let's go ahead, we're gonna double click back here on Liquify. And for this one, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit there. Let's just say we wanted to bring her hair up and out there just a little bit, okay? We wanted to do something like that and everyone's gonna pretend that looks good, except we have this in the background, okay? Now, what I would recommend do is just hit okay there and then we're just going to hit L for our lasso or I love the selection brush tool. This is where we're just gonna to wanna to make a selection right over here and then boop, we're just gonna hit generative fill and then have that generate basically back to the original shape. So if you do get into an issue where you do have to move your subject around a little bit and it does affect your background, you can use generative fill to fix the background once again. And there you can see it went ahead and reapplied and just straightened out that background for me. And of course, here in my variations, I have a few different options of what that might look like. That one looks pretty good. So I was still able, if we go ahead and see, there's the before with the liquify. You can see I just kind of brought my subject's hair up a little bit. I just did that as a point to show you. But let's just say we did wind up doing something with, with the liquify that affected our background. Simply select that area, use generative fill, and it'll fix it for you. So that's how to conquer one of the most common difficulties with the liquify tool is like, how do I adjust my subject but not affect the background? Just go ahead and affect the background, make a selection around it, generative fill, and you're good to go. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a big thumbs up if you did, and let me know in a comment right down below what you'd like to learn next. If you wanna learn even more advanced Photoshop, we got over 10 years of tutorials available for you in Flurn Pro, and we got an exclusive discount for you right down below. Thanks so much, I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.